Let's look at some helpful methods that can make your life much easier when working with advanced numbers in After Effects. The random method is a versatile tool. This method will generate a random number between 0 and 1 and will output a new random number on every frame. Random has three parts. The method name, random, followed by an open parenthesis and two optional values, output min and output max and a close parenthesis. Let's apply the random method to all the star layer properties and make them blink. First, you wanna select star one and hit T on your keyboard to reveal the opacity property. Then add a new expression by alt clicking the stopwatch and type random, all lowercase, followed by an open parenthesis, zero comma space, 100, close parenthesis. The zero here is default, so it's optional. I'm just using it here so you can see how it works. Now 100 is the maximum value that the random will output. Now when you ram preview the scene, you'll see that the star's opacity is flickering wildly. It's picking a random number between zero and 100 and changing it on every frame. This is like a chaotic version of Wiggle. Now you can also change these values to something else. I'm gonna use 25 and 75. So now if you ram preview the scene again, you'll see that it still flickers wildly, but it's not nearly as drastic. The Gauss random method is exactly like random, except its results have a Gaussian or bell-shaped distribution, which means about 90% of the results are between min and max, but 10% fall outside of the range, giving it a more realistic look. Gauss random has three parts. The method name, Gauss random with a capital R, followed by an open parenthesis and two optional values, output min and output max, and a close parenthesis. The Gauss random method results in a more realistic random output. To use the Gauss random method, you can replace random with Gauss random in the previous expression. If you find the star one layer and go to the previous expression we were working with, you can highlight random and replace it with Gauss random, capital R. So now if you click away, not much has changed, but we can right click the opacity property and hit copy expression only. Now you can come to star two through 12 and control V or command V on a Mac to paste. If you quickly press T, you'll see that all the expressions have been applied. And now if you scrub the timeline, you'll see that the stars are still twinkling. And if you come to any random frame, you can see here that star three is actually at 85% even though we've only told it to go from 25 to 75. And this is one of the numbers that fall outside of the range with Gauss Random. If you find Random and Gauss Random to be too chaotic, the Seed Random method is here to calm things down a bit. It seeds the random algorithm with a set of random numbers based on the Seed argument. It can also freeze the initial number and lock it in time. Seed Random has three parts. The method name, Seed Random, capital R, followed by two arguments wrapped in parentheses and separated by a comma. The first argument is numerical and seeds the random method which sets the unique identifier for the random pattern. The second argument is timeless, true or false, that locks the random number in time. The Seed Random method still requires the random method to function. To see how seed random can be used, we're going to add it right before our Gauss random method from earlier. So I'm going to collapse all these layers up, and I'm going to open up the previous expression and go to the very beginning. Now I'm going to start this with seed random, capital R, followed by an open parenthesis and then index, comma, space, and then true for timeless, and then close parenthesis. Now you also need to separate the statements with a semicolon and an optional space and I'm going to click away from the expression. So now if I solo this and scrub the timeline, you'll see that it's no longer blinking because it's locked in time with this true argument on the seed random method. So I'm gonna unsolo this layer again, and I'm going to right click and copy expression only, and then select two through 12 and control V or command V on a Mac to paste. And now if I scrub the timeline, you'll see that all of the stars are no longer blinking. 
So this is a great way to take a large number of layer properties and set a initial random value on each one of them based on the random seed. You can find random methods in the expression language menu under the random numbers category. You can clamp a number to restrict the minimum and maximum limits it can reach. These are useful on slider controls and position values. The clamp method starts with the method name clamp followed by a set of parentheses and will accept three arguments, the source to be clamped and the minimum and maximum value it can output. To see an advanced example of how clamp works, you can use it to contain an object within a box. Let's say you don't want these particles to escape the container, but you still want to control their position with the wiggle method to have varied chaotic movement. First, let's take a look at the particle one layer. If you open the position property, you'll see that a wiggle expression has already been applied. And now if you place your cursor right before the wiggle method, you can create a variable, I'm gonna call it source, add an equal sign, and then close this line with a semicolon. So we've basically attached the wiggle method to a variable. Now on the next line, you can create a new variable called border. Immediately after, add an equal sign, and then create a custom array with an open square bracket. The first index is gonna be 100, comma space, and the second index is also gonna be 100, close square bracket. And then after this, add a semicolon to end the phrase. Now the second line here is going to be our bounding box for the container. Now on the third line, I'm going to put it all together and start the clamp method. So I'm gonna start this with clamp, open parentheses. The first argument is going to reference the source variable from earlier, and it's gonna be the clamp's input. Now this is followed by a comma, space, now the second argument is the minimum amount that the clamp method will output. So this is going to be value minus border, and then a comma. And then the last argument is going to be the maximum that the clamp will output. So this will be value plus border. Now finally, I'm going to close this statement with a close parenthesis, and then click away from the expression field. Now this is for the particle one, and it's safely contained in this box, but all the other ones are still outside. So you're going to right click position and go to copy expression only, and then highlight the rest of the particle layers here and control V or command V on a Mac to paste. And each of the particles is now contained within the box. So now if you ran preview the scene, you'll see the particles still randomly move around the container, but they're confined within the containers boundaries. You can use math operators to create mathematical statements in your expressions. Some common ones are addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication, but a less common one, the modulus operator, which is represented as a percentage sign, can be used to output the remainder of two divisible numbers. You can use a modulus operator and a conditional statement to create a blinking light that turns on for one second and off for the next second. To start, just open up opacity on the lights layer by pressing T on your keyboard. Now you can add a new expression to opacity, and we're going to override the default expression with an if statement. So start this by typing if space, and then you can create a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you're gonna create your condition. So start this with math.floor, and then open parentheses, time, space, percentage sign, which is the modulus operator, space, two, and then close parentheses. After the close parentheses, you're gonna do space, double equal sign, space, and then zero. So basically this statement is checking to see if the current time is an even or an odd second. Now the way that it does this, the modulus operator is outputting the remainder of these two divisible numbers. And if it's equal to zero, aka an even number, then the if statement will execute. So now you can add your conditional output. So start this with an open curly bracket and then the value of 100 and then close curly bracket. And now on the next line, you can give it an else statement to give it a fallback in case the if statement fails. So start this with else, open curly bracket, and then I'm gonna use a value of 50 and then close curly bracket. 
So if you click away from the expression, nothing will change with the two red lights here. And that's because zero is an even second. Now, if you ram preview your scene, you'll notice that the lights are blinking on and off as the rocket moves through time. So every odd second, the lights turn off, and every even second, the lights remain on. So if I scrub the playhead to the first second here, you'll notice that the lights turn off right when we hit that. And that's because the if statement is failing on the odd second, turning the lights off. We've arrived at the end of lesson 302, changing values with advanced number methods. If you enjoy this expressions course, consider purchasing the paid content. It includes in-depth documentation, extra tutorial content, high definition videos, and all the project files used in the training. Your purchase will help to create more free courses like this in the future.